out here today with a short rifle that I've been looking to get my hands on for quite some time now. Marlin first began manufacturing firearms in, uh, back in the 1870s and uh, they did a great job. They came up with their own designs. They were different from the Winchesters, but they were equal to the Winchesters and better than Winchesters in some regards. There are things that the Marlins do better. There are things that the Winchesters do better. And folks who love lever action rifles love both the Marlin and the Winchester. Marlin made uh, their 1895 45 70s starting in about 1970 ish, so it's been about 50 years that they've been making the model 1895. And 1895 is just a wonderful, wonderful rifle. It uh, handles the 45 70 cartridge, which is uh, probably my favorite rifle cartridge. I love the 45 70. Got a bunch of them. They shoot a big old bullet, but they don't shoot it so fast that it kills you on the shoulder. They're pretty easy to shoot, and they'll take anything that needs taking. They're wonderful hunting rifles, and I just have a whole lot of fun with them. Remington bought out Marlin in 2007, I believe it was, and uh, the Freedom Group ended up being like an umbrella corporation that had them and several other companies too, and they immediately started to run them in the ground. They started worrying about... Uh, production instead of quality and things like that and those who are knowledgeable about uh, lever actions marlins in particular will tell you that the stuff that remington was making is just didn't compare with the stuff that marlin made before remington bought them out and freedom group came in there and screwed everything up so that went on for a few years and a couple of years ago uh, freedom group dissolved and i was glad to see it as were many people it's sad to see companies like marlin and some of the other companies that freedom group uh enveloped over the years to go belly up but uh, freedom group didn't have no business in there they just soon been making tennis shoes or plaid drawers or whatever they didn't care nothing about guns all they cared about was the bottom line and it showed and gun guys they got memories like elephants man they uh they don't forget things like that and it's just they they just ran the whole thing in the ground it was sad to see marlin go but it was good to see freedom group go so a couple of years ago the rumors started going around that ruger was buying marlin and man that excited a whole bunch of us folks because uh we know that ruger is going to do it right i had the utmost faith in ruger i know those guys and i know how they look at their products i know the pride they put into what they do and their customer service is second to none in any industry not just the firearms industry the folks at ruger are just wonderful folks and i knew when they bought marlin they was going to come out and they was going to do it right took them a while to get them out which i expected because they're not going to get them out until they know that they're right and boy they have really done it upright a few months ago they came out with the model 1895 sbl which was a rifle length model 1895 they've just come out with this one which is the model 1895 trapper this is a gorgeous wonderful little rifle 16 inch barrel the finish is a nice looking bead blast stainless tough as a pine knot it's a great hunting finish the stock is laminated wood gray in color and it's very nicely fitted uh, the stock to metal fit is just wonderful the feel of the stock the uh, drop on it everything is just perfect there's a nice butt pad on the end of the stock they also uh, have, have nice checkering panels on the uh, grip area and also on the forend. Speaking of the forend, the forend on these are a little bit slimmer than the traditional Marlin forend. Not as thin as the Winchester and it's a good thing. They're wonderfully profiled. They fit the hand great. The uh, stock fit is better than we've seen on Marlin in a long time since before freedom group came in there uh it's it's just a wonderfully designed stock and wonderfully made stock it has a sling swivel stud built into it and it's really nicely fitted to the barrel and the wood there's also a sling swivel stud built into the stock uh, in a normal place and another cool thing this is a little bitty deal but i think it's really neat as a just a way to show that ruger's a new sheriff in town in marlin and they're doing things the traditional way but they're doing them right marlin's traditional little bullseye on the buttstock is still there as those of us who have been familiar with marlin throughout the decades know that little bullseye there on the buttstock is one of the markings of marlin but they changed it just a little bit and i think it's really cool 
The traditional Marlin bullseye is a black dot inside of a white ring. Ruger has the same design, the same size, but it's a red dot inside of a white ring. Just another sign that this is a Ruger Marlin. You know it's made right. Another marking that Ruger is putting on these so that you know they're going to be made right, be made by Ruger. Right here on the back end, the port side of the barrel, there's a little proof mark that uh, is a Ruger mark instead of Marlin mark and also the Ruger serial number begins with RM so it would be a RM prefix on the Ruger made Marlin. The Marlin 1895s are made in Ruger's Mayan in North Carolina plant and they're marked as such on the barrel so that's another good way to see if it's a Ruger Marlin or not. Another nice little touch that they made is on the pistol grip cap here there's a Marlin horse and rider on this thing that's laser engraved into it, which is a really nice touch. And that's also a hallmark of the Ruger made Marlins. The barrel length on the Trapper is 16 inches, just a perfect length for uh, ballistic efficiency and ease of handling. This thing swings and handles just great. Also, it has a traditional Ballard type rifling in it. The magazine tube holds five rounds, so you got a six round capacity all together, which is 4570, that's like six rounds of cannon fire. You're doing good with that. The end of the barrel is threaded for a muzzle device, whether it be a sound suppressor or a muzzle brake or whatever kind of accessory you want to put on there. The muzzle is threaded 11 16th by 24, so that works great. And you've got a nice little stainless steel thread protector on here that threads on and off very easily and makes it really easy to put on whatever kind of muzzle device you want to put on this thing. The barrel is cold hammer forged, stainless steel with a nice matte finish on it. It's just a very nice barrel. The lever on the Ruger made Marlin 1895s, whether it be the SBL or the Trapper as this one is, they're a larger loop design. It's not a huge loop. It's a big enough loop where it's easy to work, easy to get your hand in there with gloves on, but it still looks graceful. It's just a very nicely designed lever. It works wonderfully. He worked the thing with authority. and It's a very smooth action on this. You're gonna really be pleased with the action on this Marlin 1895. The safety on the 1895 is a cross bolt type. It's located right here by the hammer. You push it in from the starboard side to uh, put the rifle on fire condition and you'll see a red line come up in the other side when it pops out. The hammer and trigger look very nice. They're polished stainless steel, which makes a nice contrast, visually speaking, with the satin stainless of the rest of the gun. It just looks really neat. The hammer also is a traditional half cock design on the hammer. The trigger is also bright polished stainless steel and it's really got a nice trigger pull on it. It lets off very crisp, very easy. There's not any over travel to it or anything like that. The trigger pull weight is right at three pounds, 10 ounces. If you want a trigger that's gonna work every time and this is that trigger. The bolt on the 1895 Trapper is another very attractive feature. It's nickel plated to smooth the action up and it's spiral fluted. The whole thing helps it run smooth and not gunk up from dirt and grease and things like that. The operation on this thing is so smooth, it really runs like a sewing machine. The sights on the Trapper are really special. They are really super nice. They're made by Skinner Sights in Montana. Uh, Andy Larson that runs Skinner Sights is a very good friend of mine. He makes high quality sights in his small shop and he does them right. They're a peep sight. They've got a threaded insert into them. You can uh, get different uh, aperture diameters or you can just take the thing out and use it like a ghost ring. A peep sight is what you want on a lever action rifle. You're not using a scope sight typically on a uh, 4570 lever gun because the thing's got a trajectory like a rainbow or a football and that's nothing wrong with that. I love that about the 4570. The front sight is also made by Skinner Sights and it's a ramp sight with a wide insert in it and it really picks up it's really easy to pick up, really easy to find on that uh, on that side picture. The, the front side really pops out there in the aperture of the rear side. And if you're not used to shooting aperture sights, it's very easy to do because you don't have to have the thing perfectly lined up in the rear side. If you see that front side, you're peeping through the rear side. You're not lining them up like you do traditional sights. You're peeping through the rear side, thus the name peep side, to see the front side. So you peep through the rear side, you put the front side on what you want to shoot, and you let it rip. The thing works great.
if you want to mount a scope on top of this you can get uh, scope mounts from several different places such as uh, XS sites they make a lever rail that is just a great outfit but the barrel and the receiver is already drilled and tapped for those scope mounts so it's easy to put a scope mount on this thing if you want to I prefer to use this with the peep sights because I think it's just the perfect sights for these things if you do decide that you want to put a scope on this, uh, you can use a scout scope out, out over the barrel, but if you use a scope that overhangs the rear end of it, you need to put a uh, spur on your hammer so you can reach up under that and get a, get a hold of that underneath your scope bail. Uh, in the past, you've had to buy these wherever you can buy them, but Ruger does include one in this, and they also include the instruction that you must use that if you're going to have a scope hanging out there. And that's good advice because if you've got a scope bell hanging out there, you're not going to be able to reach your thumb up there under the hammer to get the hammer back on it. The accuracy of the 1895 Trapper really kind of surprised me. I was expecting good accuracy, but I wasn't really expecting what I got. Seated at a bench, which is not something that I often do, using the Skinner peep sights, I was able to keep five shots in a very small group. I had one shot that kind of flew off and hit the edge of the playing card, but four of those five shots clustered into about three quarters of an inch at 50 yards, and that is about half the size I was expecting from the 1895s that I've shot in the past. So hunting with this 1895 at any range that you feel comfortable using the 4570, you will be able to count on this rifle being accurate enough. It'll really reach out there and get them and it'll shoot accurate groups for a good ways out there. The Model 1895 is configured to feed a wide variety of different ammunition types. The only thing I had around here was a bunch of the uh, classic 405 grain flat point lead because that to me is the classic 4570 load. I might could have dug out a box or two or something else, but most of it that I've got around here is the good old classic 405 grain load uh, as loaded by double tap. I've got a bunch of double tap 405 grain and that's a, it's a very nice load. It's running out about 1700, 1750 feet per second out of this 16 inch barrel. It's a great ammo choice, but also this rifle is made to run great with like the uh, Hornady uh, Lever Revolution uh, stuff and uh, different different bullet shapes that are available. For those of you who know anything about lever actions, this will go without saying, but for the rest of you, you don't want to use any pointed bullets in this thing because the recoil of it might set off the next round in the tube if you've got a point on the primer of the round in front of it. So that's a no-no. You don't want to use that stuff and you don't need it with a 4570. If you're punching 45 caliber holes in meat that's 100 to 1,000 yards away, uh, that's all you need. A 45 caliber hole is going to take down anything. Heck, the 4570s dropped no telling it to buffaloes back in the day. And uh, these things work great for deer and bear and even larger game. They've used them all over the planet to take everything, and the 4570 is up to it. When I first heard that Ruger was going to be making the Marlins, I was so excited because I knew Ruger was going to do it right, and they have not let me down with this 1895 Trapper. This is a very well-made rifle. It's a beautiful rifle. It's accurate. It's well-fit. There's just nothing bad I can say about this thing. It, it handles the horsepower of the 4570 in a package that only weighs a little over 7 pounds. It's wonderful. I highly recommend you try these out. The MSRP on the Model 1895 Trapper is $1,349, and uh, they'll tell you right on their website that this is going to be a limited availability on these things. They're going to be hard to get for a little while, so keep looking. You might can find you one. Uh, if you endeavor to persevere, as Chief Lone Waddy said, then you can uh, find you one of these. 
you can get on uh, Lipsy's website, which is Lipsy's.com, and uh, click on their dealer finder, and they'll tell you where there's a dealer in your area that can help you get one of these. To order one of these online, go to galleryofguns.com, which is Davidson's website. Uh, they've got a thing there called the Gun Genie. You click on that, give them your zip code, and they'll have dealers in your area contact you with competitive bids, telling you just what it'll cost to get this out the door, including the price of the gun, any kind of sales tax or convenience fees or uh, please Mr. Sheriff can I have my civil rights today fees uh, all that kind of stuff they can think of to saddle the poor gun owner with they'll tell you exactly what it's going to cost to get it out and you go to the you go to the dealer and pay the man just like you would at any other time walk out the door with your prize. Ruger has really knocked it out of the park with their 1895 SBL and their 1895 Trapper as I knew they would. Uh, those of us who know Ruger have been waiting on these for a long time because we knew Ruger was going to do them and they was going to do them upright. They have certainly done that. They've not let us down. They made a great addition and a wonderful chapter to the story of Marlin Firearms. <laughs>